Welcome to Understand. This is Jordan with Scientific Toolworks. Are you sick of navigating through your clunky directory structure just to find certain files? Do you wish you had a way to keep track of which developers on your team are in charge of certain items? These are problems that are cleaned up with ease using Understand's new architecture designer. In a previous video, we covered the basics of reorganizing your code through user-defined hierarchies called architectures. Using the architecture browser alone, it's possible to restructure your code base whatever way you see fit. However, creating new architectures is now even easier with the architecture designer. The designer allows you to drag and drop entities like files or entire directories into custom nodes and allows you to see your new hierarchy in graph format so you can more easily share, visualize, or make changes to it in no time. The designer also better facilitates creating your architecture from the top down, whereas the browser tends to require more of a bottom-up approach. In this video, we'll go over how to access the designer and create your first architecture with it, as well as how to edit and organize this architecture while viewing your changes graphically in real time. To open the architecture designer, go to Architectures in the top level menu, then Design Architectures, and either select an existing one to edit or create a new one. We don't have an existing one in this case, so we'll create a new one. This will pull up the architecture designer dialog window. First things first, let's give our new architecture a name. And press enter to save it. Now let's say I have a fairly good idea of how I want to restructure my code base. I want to assign directories and files to certain staff members to indicate who's responsible for what. First I'll add some nodes and subnodes to get started. To do so, I just need to go to the left-hand panel and start typing the names of my nodes separated by new lines. To add a subnode, I simply have to press tab or space to indent the node under the parent. So we'll separate by state. And under the Utah subnode, I'll add some people. Great, now we have some basic nodes set up for our architecture. Now let's add some project files to them. We'll do this by simply dragging and dropping from the right hand panel, which lists all files in our project, to the nodes in the graph. So if we go over to source, expand it, drag the app directory into Natasha. Notice that when we drag and drop an entire directory, that directory automatically becomes a subnode. What happens if we drag a single file into a node? Let's expand app and we'll drag application.cpp into Jordan. It disappeared. Well, not exactly. That file didn't become a subnode of Jordan, so it doesn't appear on the graph as one. Instead, when we double click a node to expand it, we'll see the contents of that node and the file should be there. Like so. Now let's talk about what each of the buttons above the left hand panel do. If we select a node, we can press the plus button to add a subnode to it. So we can select app and add a subnode, like so. And if we have a node selected, we can press the minus button to delete it. So we'll select that one and press minus to undo that. There are also undo and redo buttons that do exactly what you would expect, simply cycling between the most recent changes made to your architecture. So if we press undo, should add that untitled node back. And then if we press redo, it should delete it again. Then we have the filter button. This button acts to hide entities that have already been added to this architecture. This is a really useful tool for making sure your entire code base is covered with every item placed into a node in your custom architecture. Let's press it and see how that affects the right hand panel. As you can see, it deletes the app directory because the app directory is already inside of the Natasha subnode. And if we undo that, you'll see it reappear. Lastly, clicking on the information button will bring up a quick summary on how to use the designer tool in case you need a refresher. And it looks like that. Some important things to notice in the architecture designer include the minimap, which is included in all understand graphs as well. If your architecture becomes too large to see on one screen, you can quickly and easily navigate to the node you want by clicking and dragging your mouse around the minimap here, like so. 
Also, you may have noticed that behind the architecture designer dialog window here, the architecture browser in the main understand window has been automatically updating with our changes to the designer over here. This means that once you create your new architecture here, you can rest easy knowing it's already saved and accessible from the browser as well. If we expand Jordan's arch, you can see that staff, Utah, and all of the directories are already in there. What if you need to search for a specific file or directory to add to a node? Well, you can head over to the right hand panel again and simply type a word or phrase into the search box and use the arrows to cycle through matches. Like so. This was a short video on how to use the architecture designer and understand. In this video, we covered how to create a new architecture using the designer, as well as some of its most powerful features. For more information on the architecture designer, visit support.sitools.com.